AirDroid is vulnerable to hacks, a zero day makes Tor users not so anonymous, the SF Muni hacker gets hacked, and the Avalanche botnet is taken offline. Coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morrison. This is ThreatWire for Tuesday, December 6, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Good news for our patrons over at patreon.com slash ThreatWire. We are now offering an exclusive Patreon-only audio feed of ThreatWire. You can copy our RSS link into your favorite podcasting app to listen to our show offline now. You fund the making of the show, so thank you for letting us bring you security news every single week. AirDroid is a popular Android app that lets you access your Android phone via the computer as well as send notifications to your desktop. It's actually really cool and it can be quite handy, but for the last six months at least, it's been open to code execution attacks and data theft attacks if the user is on an unsecured network. This flaw affects up to 50 million users who have downloaded the app from the Google Play Store. AirDroid uses a static encryption key that's easily detectable whenever you transmit files to and from the phone, and not all of the data transmitted is sent over HTTP. HTTPS. Now, while the HTTP traffic, including updates for the app itself, are encrypted with DES, the encryption key is hard-coded. So if an attacker is on the same network, they can get full control of the phone and view your IMEI, IMSI, and other data information. Now, while researchers at Zimperium disclosed the vulnerability to AirDroid in May, AirDroid developers have released two updates since then, neither of which have fixed the problem. AirDrop CMO wrote that an update is coming in two weeks to fix the problem, and until then, it is advised to only use AirDroid on trusted networks and update it as soon as new releases are available. But again, over only trusted networks. Use Tor or Firefox? Be careful because a zero day has been found in the wild being used to de-anonymize people using Tor. Tor has since updated their browser, but Tor also wrote in a blog post that the security flaw responsible for this urgent release is already actively exploited on Windows systems. Even though there is currently, to the best of our knowledge, no similar exploits for OS X or Linux users available, the underlying bug affects those platforms as well. The same vulnerability was also found in Firefox and patched immediately. This flaw uses code hidden in JavaScript to send the target IP and MAC address to the attacker. And it's eerily similar to the FBI execution attacks ran in 2013 to identify Tor users trading child porn. The vulnerability has been a part of browser code for at least five years. For those using Tor and Firefox, update your browser's ASAP and steer clear of running JavaScript on any sites not deemed necessary necessary, or just don't run it at all. Right after Thanksgiving holiday in the US, a ransomware attack was thrown at San Francisco's Municipal Railway, commonly referred to as Muni, which closed down payment systems and froze screens on a message displaying, you hacked, all data encrypted, with hackers asking for $73,000 in Bitcoin to be sent to a Russian web service email address. According to SFMTA, the local transportation agency, all operations were restored to normal by Sunday, and no data was was accessed from the servers. Over the weekend, users of Muni received free rides while the payment kiosks and the gates were offline. According to Ars Technica, the attacker gained access through an Oracle WebLogic server vulnerability, and the Muni hack is not the first of its kind. In an update by Krebs on Security, the hacker seems to have also gotten hacked. A security researcher breached the attacker's email account by guessing the secret question answer and discovered that the attacker had extorted bitcoins from many other victims, at least $140,000 USD worth. They also discovered the possibility of the attacker being from Iran, not Russia, based on geolocation data. SFMTA is working with authorities to find the culprit, and Muni services are working without issue again thanks to backups. But this could be a sign of much worse to come with the hacking of public infrastructure. Europol, along with several other agencies, have taken down a huge botnet called Avalanche that has been in operation since at least 2009 in a coordinated effort across five different countries with arrests and searches. Avalanche has been used for phishing attacks and at least 17 different types of malware, but more than 50 servers for the botnet were taken offline by the sting. Over 800,000 domains were seized, sinkholed, or blocked in this operation. 
Wow, that's a lot of domains. Thank you again for being patrons of ThreatWire. You can contribute over at patreon.com slash threatwire to get your name on threatwire.net, as well as your own fur baby in the show, just like these ones, because they really are stinking adorable. If everyone that watches the show donates a dollar per month, we would successfully cover all of our fees, like rent, electricity, plus we will be able to put a lot more time into the show, so we can do upgrades and bring you more content, just like that audio RSS feed. If you can't contribute, give the show a thumbs up, subscribe on youtube.com slash hack5. Let's see if we can get our channel up to 285,000 subscribers. You guys already passed 280,000 subscribers two weeks ago. That was my last challenge, and that's awesome. Pat yourselves on the back. That's amazing. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse. I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.